In this video we will talk about different camera shots that I constantly use for most of my events and location shoots. I will explain their importance as well as what information should be included to make them more effective. During the editing process we will make sure to put these shots in a specific order. This way the video will be easier to understand. While I do this for most of my videos, it is not always the case. It really depends what kind of effect you want to achieve. You can play it safe and put video shots in a correct order or jump straight into the action from the very beginning, such as a close-up shot. We will talk about this later. In the beginning of this video you may have noticed from the very first medium shot that we were headed to Willowbrook Park. The second shot, a close-up of the street signs, indicated the precise intersection next to the park. A following white shot shows the park and the geese, which makes for a smooth transition to the next full shot of the birds walking. The last three video clips were an intriguing over-the-shoulder shot, observing a surprise guest taking pictures of the birds. This type of shot has a captivating effect on the viewer, unlike the previous static shots. Now it's time to take a lunch break. Notice how this panning white shot ends up showing our destination, the Harvest Cafe, which is located at the intersection of New Door Plain and Hat Avenue. Inside the cafe I use the mixture of medium and close-up shots to show the table setup, a holiday present, the menu, and of course the food we ordered. When you are showing a lot of video clips of similar topic, a zoom and tilt shots will make these seem less repetitive. It's a good idea to do a close-up shot of something unusual, like these eggs or cappuccino foam. This will make the video more exciting. Now let's take a look at one of my older videos and see if you can identify it what it is about. I started off with the street signs, the available map of the location. We see that I'm riding a bicycle and we get a series of wide shots of the park itself. And you can obviously tell it's a very spacious environment. I'm riding a bicycle with a friend and we're going fast, we're going slow, we're stopping and taking a lot of uh, wide shots to show you the area and even including myself in it as well as looking into the skies and catching some of the wildlife in this case the eagles flying above you can also get an understanding what kind of terrain you'll be traveling through if you were to visit there are some unpaved paths that are covered by gravel and even some kind of building that is there for maintenance purposes and the last shot we see that it is a very uh, large park. Remember when I said that we can start a video with close-up shots? Let's try it. 
From the first close-up shots you can tell that someone just woke up, got dressed, started driving and only then we get the destination details. After that we are seen walking to it, entering, there will be a wedding here so we want to show off some of the preparations as well as some of the beautiful views. As you can see, you can start telling your story from the moment you woke up or start from the point that you have arrived on the destination, showing white shots where it's understandable uh, what the place is, uh, perhaps street signs, uh, name of the place. You put in information that is important to you and to the viewer so that whoever is watching they will be able to understand what is going on uh, what is taking place where are they perhaps it's good to use wide shots with close shots medium shots so they differentiate and add variety uh, throw some special things in between so just like I showed you the eggs, for instance, uh, and the cappuccino. Maintaining a certain order uh, of the video clips, like you arrive at the location, then something is happening in there. And then let's say uh, you have a dessert. Obviously, that's the end of the event. I hope you learned something here. Thank you for watching.